Thank you for making Locked On Heat your first listen. The NBA trade deadline is Thursday, and the Locked On NBA podcast will be covering it live from 2 to 4 p.m. Join Kim Becker, John Corrales, and Locked On Fantasy Basketball host Josh Lloyd to get analysis of every blockbuster move. Subscribe to the Locked On NBA YouTube channel and turn your notifications on so then you know when they go live. Also, subscribe to the Locked On Heat YouTube channel and tune into our show right after the Locked On NBA show at 4 p.m. Eastern on Thursday. We'll have live reaction to the trade deadline. Whether or not the Miami Heat make a move or not, there will be plenty for us to talk about, uh, which is very obvious considering that we're two days away. We already have tons of things to talk about. Um, but we should discuss some of the rumors lately that uh, for uh, among the players at the Heat are are rumored to be interested in, and our friend uh, Greg Sylvander over at Five Reasons Sports reporting that the Heat are interested, targeting potentially Charlotte Hornets power forward P.J. Washington among an assortment of other players. Now, right. P.J. Washington was the name that was most interesting out of the list. And look, I haven't done any digging on the P.J. Washington thing in particular, but uh, as far as his contract, it makes sense. And it's in line with what you and I have been talking about all along. When you look, Everybody wants to talk about the Duncan Robinson uh, trade. Right. That was always going to be a, a far-fetched idea. A much more likely scenario for Miami ahead of this deadline was packaging Markeith Morris and a smaller contract, whether it be Casey Akpala or Armer Yurtsevin, with okay. and, and kind of putting $4.2, $4.4 million together and maybe taking those two guys, moving it to another team, getting somebody who can contribute right, right away back in return, and then promoting Caleb Martin into what would be then the 14th roster spot, right? And you just kind of leave that 15th spot open or potentially leave it open for a buyout guy. But... So P.J. Washington's contract fits in that sort of $4.4 million contract spot. So what do you think about P.J. Washington? Well, he's got a team option for next season, too. So that's that's great. Uh, I guess Miami could ultimately wind up, you know, choosing not to pick up that option and keeping some salary cap space there. Although, I I mean, aside from year seven, none of those players really have any time left on their contract anyway. But as far as Washington, the player, he's fine. Like, he's a name because he was a lottery pick, uh, you know, played at Kentucky. Obviously, there's a connection to Miami there. Limited athleticism from what I've seen. Uh, okay shooting, although I would say that he probably takes some um, some difficult shots that don't need to be taken. So I wonder if he's just a player in need of a change of scenery. And, and look, mm-hmm. we've seen that before. It's, it's hard to gauge a player's value or impact just based on three seasons uh, in Charlotte of all places where they've been losing and they've gone through such turmoil in terms of their coaching staff and everything else and players. And, uh, you know, how do you evaluate what PJ Washington can do based on what he's done on a bad team? And so there is potential there. I'm just not particularly high on that potential. Uh, I think he can do some things, but he's not a passer. He's just an immediate upgrade for this season. And if that's the case, that's fine. Uh, But only because you just don't believe that Marquise Morris is ever going to play in for the heat this season. Right. Um, And for the record, it's worth noting that the Heat were interested in P.J. Washington and lead up to that 2019 draft. They worked him out a couple different times and they were interested in him. We don't know if they would have taken him. He he went off the board one pick before them to Charlotte. They ended up, of course, with Tyler Hero. And and I would say that probably worked out. But um, they liked P.J. Washington back then. And I would imagine they probably still do. He's a 38 percent three point shooter. Uh, He's not particularly great from the corners, um, but that's not on a very high volume either. The other thing with P.J. is that he is extension eligible this summer. So this would not be a one-year rental. This would not be a situation where you decline the team option there. I I mean, this is a guy who you would trade for, understanding that you would pick him. You would would extend him. Now, I don't know what that extension looks like. It's probably not a huge extension, but it's something that you would do to to retain him, I would imagine. Um, Do the Heat like P.J. Washington that much? Would they have to get him in-house to determine that? Probably, yep. right? Yeah. Um, but they they probably like him enough to at least look at it. And again, we don't know what the extent of any con- – if there had even been a conversation. Look, the way that this stuff works is a GM will call another GM and say, hey, what? who do you like on my roster? Here's who I like on your roster. And maybe that's the end of the conversation. Very rarely do you actually get a, let's do this for this, and then you plug it right. into the trade machine and it works. Like You very rarely get that in the NBA. But for it to actually work out, it would be – Markeith Morris and probably Omer Yurtsevin, because you got to think if you're from if you're Charlotte, why would you trade PJ Washington, the guy who three years ago you took in the lottery, who's been okay for you? He's been useful. He's played some four, played some five for you. He's versatile. He fills gaps for you. 
He's not a hopeless player by any stretch. Why would you trade a nice young player in PJ Washington? Well, number one, maybe you don't want to pay the extension this summer. That's that, right. that's a that's a factor. And also because you're looking for a center and you've made it known to everybody that you're looking for a center. And Omer Yurtsevin plays the center position and he's been really uh, impressive in the small amount of minutes that he's had. And if you kind of look at what they need, they need a guy like Yurtsevin. He can kind of stretch the floor. He can rebound a bunch. He's a presence in the in the paint at least. He's young, so yeah. he fits their timeline. Uh, there's things to like there. He's a Georgetown guy. That's close to Charlotte. Um, that probably doesn't matter, but I don't know. I thought yeah. it was worth pointing out. Uh, <laughs> so it would be Markeith Morris and Omer Yurtsevin for P.J. Washington. So then the question goes back to Miami. After everything you've seen from Omer Yurtsevin, and we love some Omer Yurtsevin, would you be willing to trade Omer Yurtsevin yeah. in a package to get P.J. Washington? We put it on the Twitter poll over on Lockdown Heat on Twitter. Uh, 68% of you said yes. 32% of you said no. So overwhelmingly, a lot, uh, majority of you said yeah. I, would I will say 100% of the front office will do the trade in a heartbeat if they like I Washington think it, more. Yeah, I think it would make sense. The only problem with it, though, doesn't exactly line up contract-wise, like perfectly. Miami is so close to the luxury tax line, $400,000, that this deal would put them at $262,000 below that tax line. So you're still not paying the tax. But the mm. problem becomes you're doing a two-for-one deal. You only got 13 players under contract. You need 14 by league rules. So you would have to promote Caleb Martin would probably be the first move. You would have to promote Caleb Martin on a minimum contract. It would be prorated, but it wouldn't be prorated enough to keep you out of the luxury tax. So you would be doing this deal and guaranteeing that you would be entering the luxury tax if you did this deal by itself. You could do potentially a second deal. But you couldn't do a second deal to just offload, for example, Casey Akpala, because now you're only with 12 players. And you, if you, even if you promoted Caleb Martin, you're only at 13, and you still have to go sign somebody else to get to 14, and now you have the same problem. So I don't. Th this doesn't quite mathematically make sense unless you deal a higher salary for a much lesser salary. Maybe it's Duncan Robinson's 15.6 for somebody who makes 13 or 14 or something easier like that. But again, are you jumping through all these hoops for P.J. Washington? I don't think so. As much as maybe the Heat like P.J. Washington, I'm sure they don't like him that much unless they think that that subsequent deal also improves the team. So it's, you, it's a little tricky here. Do you, do you like him that much? No. I like P.J. Washington. I like his versatility. I think exact, I think the Heat need to find a guy Someone. like P.J. Washington. Right. They, it, we, look, we, we've been wondering whether or not Markeith Morris was going to play all season. We have no idea. And when he does come back, we don't know what he's going to look like. They need somebody in that backup four role. And I don't okay, think that this? you could rely on If you can find a guy who could be healthy and play for you right now with giving and not having to jump all, through all these hoops, I think you do it. And I right. just so the, the math doesn't quite work. Here's a theoretical. Going through all those uh, cap gymnastics yeah. to get a player like uh, – Washington, who you probably can't sign long term because of conflicts with the rest of the contracts on this roster, and knowing that he is, you know, okay as a player and fits what they're trying to do now, but you still need a four. Would he be worth the sacrifice and the cost over, say, Paul Millsap if he's available as a buyout player? Well, you'd have to first unload somebody, and so you're gonna have to, in order to even have the buyout conversation, because I don't think that, like, I would rather get Paul Mills. Paul Millsap can't really do much right now. But if, mm -hmm. if the if the cost is free mm -hmm. and you don't have to do all this work, then maybe it's worth exploring. I don't know. But you also have to have some pretty good intel if you're Miami because we have a timeline thing here too. Because right now, if you were to add Paul Millsap, you couldn't do it until late March, right? Which now you're kind of – it's again, it got kind of it defeats the purpose. Like by then, Marquise Morris might be back. So what's the, even the yeah. point of adding Paul Millsap? And also – you wouldn't be able to promote Caleb Martin at that point, and then Caleb Martin wouldn't be eligible for the playoffs, which is the whole reason why you want to promote him from that two-way contract. So you've got to have really good intel on that Paul Millsap is going to sign with you at that point, it, right? Or I should say that he's going to sign with, he's going to get bought out, and then he's going to sign with you because before this trade deadline, you would have to clear cap space. You'd have to trade Markeith Morris or Casey Paula into Oklahoma City's cap space or whatever, and right. and just and be very very confident that you're getting somebody on the buyout market. Would I do it for Paul Millsap? No. But if I was super confident in a guy like Thaddeus Young, 100% I would do that. Yeah. I wonder if he gets bought out at this point, considering how much they have played him of late, given all the injuries that they're going yeah, through. There's but been some, some of the scuttle that they could trade him and stuff, but I don't see anybody taking on that salary. We'll see what happens. 
couple of the other names that Greg mentioned in a tweet, uh, Rui Hachimura of the Washington Wizards. We That's should not also happen. note. We should also note that today, uh, Bradley Beal electing to have season-ending surgery, and he'll be out for the rest of the year. The Washington Wizards already a scrambling mess of a team, and not likely to make any kind of noise in the playoffs. Now they're almost assuredly done. They're going to be probably sellers at the NBA trend mm-hmm. line. I know they'd probably like to move Montrez Harrell. I don't think that's going to happen either. I don't know if there's any takers for a guy like him or for that contract. Uh, but not at Hachimura. You're not a believer no. in what Hachimura brings to the table. No, um, I love Hachimura. Washington does too. It's not going to happen. What, like, it, what, you think the Wizards like Hachimura that much? I mean... He's only making the rookie scale. Like, what are the Heat going to – hey, what do you guys want for – we've got Casey Akpala. Would you – Wizards are like, ha, ah, no, thank you. We'll yeah. hang on to Hachimura. They hey, like Mark Hachimura. Moore has played for the Wizards already, so maybe it's a reunion of sorts. So. <laughs> They're not doing that. It's right. a rebuilding team. The Hachimura thing is a pipe dream. It's one of those things where Pat Riley calls, hey, would you guys trade him to – yeah, not for anything you guys have. Call right. never for him. Thank you. Right. And, and Batum, same thing. The Clippers aren't trading Batum. They're contenders. I mean, I think yeah. they still see themselves. Yeah, they, they made that trade for Norm Powell, uh, yeah. and I think they probably expect Kawhi Leonard to make a return at some point soon, given all that. And possibly uh, that Paul George. Yeah. So if that's the case, uh, they, they don't want to trade away one of their best players. Okay. 